everybody, this is me and welcome back to another video. So today's video is one that I've been needing to make for quite a while now and that is all about confidence. So not too long ago, I lost my confidence with riding pretty badly and I feel like I would have loved to have watched a video a bit like this um, on how I got it back how I lost it because I've been lucky enough to work with so many different riders throughout the equestrian industry from top level show jumpers, Olympians, um, to here, there and everywhere. And every single rider I've talked to has lost their confidence with riding at some stage. Now recently, as I said before, I've had one of the worst confidence knocks ever. But throughout my equestrian journey, I've had little times where I haven't felt as confident when it comes to riding and I thought I'd talk to you guys a little bit more about that. So I'd say the worst my confidence was was probably back in the winter of 2021, January, February time. Now, if we rewind a little bit, that was, I had a really, really bad fall back in November 2020 and that was with Joey. Now I did do a whole video about this, talking about my fall, um, if you didn't know, Basically, Joey and I went over a jump, he knocked it, got a bit annoyed with himself, zoomed off. We ended up getting very close to the end of an arena fence. And um, obviously Joey didn't want to go into the fence, so he did a little dodge. I was unbalanced from him having a little play around, back legs up in the air, that sort of shebang. And um, yeah, I just went bang, straight into the arena fence, hit my head, hit my ribs, it was so hard that um, and made such a loud noise that my grandma who lives next door came out was like, what was that bang? It was me on the fence. So yeah, that was not great. I actually broke my rib. A lot of people didn't believe me that I broke my rib because apparently because I was still riding, I was still going, I've got quite a high pain tolerance, but um, I didn't actually realize that I broke it straight away. I'm very much a person where, like, I, to be honest, after that fall, I got straight back on Joey did it again probably should have swapped my helmet out because I didn't really realize how hard I hit it on the fence I'm very much I've always been a if I fall off I need to get straight back on and do it again because I feel like the, unless you're very severely injured I feel like it's really bad to just walk away and then stop because if not you know you know you have you haven't done it again then um so anyway I did that I'm very good at playing things off to make them seem like it's not a big deal. I was kind of like, oh, it's fine. I've fallen off so many times before. This one was a little bit more painful, but it's all good. Carried on, got, got on with my life. Um, and then there were just lots of little things that added up to make my confidence completely shatter <laughs> that winter. So yeah, that was back in the November. I had my broken rib. That slowly recovered. I, as I was saying before, I didn't even realize that it was broken because I have quite a high pain tolerance. And I was talking with my family and I was like, I've been really struggling to get out of bed in the morning because it kind of feels like I'm being stabbed in the side every time. I had a little feel of it and they were like, yeah, that, that's broken. So I was just carrying on riding with a broken rib. So if you look at my riding footage from that sort of time period, if my riding was a bit dodgy, probably was because I was in a bit of pain while I was riding. I carried on jumping Joey, carried on, thought I was completely fine with my confidence. Now that winter was the first winter that we had Joey and um, I found out that he is not a happy bunny if he doesn't have much turnout. Now we had one of the most horrendous winters that year, um, along with it being horrible with COVID and lockdowns. So we weren't able to get Joey out many places because of lockdowns. And obviously, I, you know, I can't complain about this. There are a lot of people that suffered really badly with COVID and, you know, not being able to get my horse out and do things, you know, I can't complain about that. But it wasn't the best. I wasn't able to have lessons. So I really felt like I was on my own in the dark. And then when Joey started going through his teenage phase, of not being the easiest of horses. There was a stage where even just doing flat work in the arena, if I asked him to do a trot transition to a cant transition, ooh, my life flashed before my eyes because he can bust some pretty impressive moves. So that shook me up a little bit. So we had a winter where I was like, you know what? I'm really struggling to do show jumping with Joey in our arena because it's a little bit smaller. And I think I just had this thing in the back of my mind where I was like, if he zooms off after a fence, 
I'm going to end up in the fence again. So I had a winter where I was like, you know what, we're going to really focus on our hacking and our flat work, nail that, carry on riding him, building up his muscle. And then we slowly came out of lockdown, we could do a few more things. And one of the first sort of um, outings that we did was we went to Hickstead and did some cross country. Now I'd taken Joey there the autumn before. He was absolutely incredible. He was hitting all the strides. I did like a little GoPro video of that and he was incredible. So I thought he was so good last time we went there. I'll take him back again. We'll just do the same few jumps, easy. Now, because Joey hadn't been in the horse box for a while, we arrived and he was pretty stressed. I, part of it was probably excitement, but then part of it was like, oh my goodness, I have not been anywhere apart from home for a very long time. And being a young horse that hasn't seen as much of the world as he should have because of COVID, that was a lot. And also because we've been working with him so much on building up his muscle and all that kind of thing. Um, when we got there, it felt like I was riding a completely different horse. He, in, over that winter, basically went from a gangly youngster <laughs> to oh my goodness, I have no brakes, this horse is powerful. So um, I am a very positive person. I like to um, focus on the good things and that's what I did in that video. You know, I talked about how he loaded after five minutes when we had a little bit of an issue with him loading. Um, we got there, didn't fall off, he jumped the fences and my riding wasn't the best. I felt very anxious that day. There was a lot going on in my life at the time as well. And I definitely didn't ride my best. And I think again, I had that little thing in the back of my mind where I was worried about him zooming off after a fence or me falling off, all that kind of stuff. And I definitely didn't ride my best in that footage. And um, there was a lot to be said about that day. Um, but I feel like I've learned a lot from that. For example, one of the things that I did was I did the sort of inventor style of after he went over the fence, I would slip my reins um, rather than properly fold because if he was to tank off afterwards. So basically I was getting a little bit left behind over fences because I was just so worried about him zooming off afterwards if I gave him too much rein. But I tried to make sure that as I was going over those fences, I slipped them back so he did have his neck and his mouth and all that kind of thing. But anyway, I've learned a lot since then and I feel like we've really grown as a partnership. But also, one of the other things that really knocked my confidence around that time was, this sounds absolutely ridiculous, but it was actually when we went to the Charles Owen factory and they analyzed my helmet. Again, I kind of said before that I went through this phase, I was like, ah, it's all fine, it's all fine. And then when they looked at my helmet, and they looked at how smashed up it was. Obviously it did its job, you know, it's like a crumple zone of a car, it has to kind of, anyway. They, uh, if you want to watch that video and find out a little bit more about the, the crack in my helmet, I'll put some eye cards up and things like that. And that was when I kind of had a, oh my goodness moment, because um, yeah, they were like, Esme, did you have a concussion? Were you in hospital after this accident? And I was like, no, I just kind of got on with my day, if I'm honest. So that kind of hit me a little bit when I kind of realized if I hadn't have been wearing that helmet, the sort of fall I had because it was on the arena fence, so it was on a spike point kind of area, it, it really hit home. And after that, I kind of thought, oh my goodness, that could have been a lot worse. <laughs> um, so that also really hit my confidence. So that spring, it was like, okay, the horse box is finally fixed. Lockdown is releasing. Let's get Joey out. Let's get our confidence back. So I had lots of different lessons with lots of different instructors that has been so beneficial. So thank you to all the people that have helped me with me and Joey's journey. And that was when I did my first competition. Now, I cannot tell you how nervous I was before that competition. I feel like, I'm really sorry. I feel like this is gonna, this video has kind of become like a me and Joey's journey. Um, it's definitely been a journey, that is for sure. I wanted to get a young horse to show the up and downs and there have certainly been some downs, but I cannot, you know, there have been so many ups as well. It's all been worth it in the end, even if it pretty much crushed, destroyed, crumpled my confidence because going into that spring, the thought of jumping Joey made me feel physically ill. Now, I love show jumping. Show jumping is like my favorite discipline in my heart. You know, I always think of myself as a show jumper. And 
the thought of not wanting to do show jumping, I was like, what is this? My brain could not compute something I love so much became something I dreaded to do. So um, one of the ways I kind of got my confidence back was doing, go basically going completely back to basics, doing everything until it became boring. So if that was doing pole work exercises and then gr gradually doing them as cross poles. And then one of the cross poles was like, oh, this is too easy, this is too boring gradually building them up to fences. And I wanted to make, the reason why I haven't made this video last year, well, I did, and then I was like, you know what? I wanna redo it. But also I wanted to make this video when I got to a stage where I was feeling really confident with me and Joey's partnership. Having lockdowns and things, it, I feel like there have been so many things where we've gone a few steps back, but we've always gone more steps forward, which is a good thing. And, um, but yeah, anyway, I was so nervous before that competition because I hadn't really competed since doing YouTube. You know, I wasn't sure what it was gonna be like if people recognized me, would they come up to me while I was getting Joey ready and I was like trying to get in the competition zone, focusing. And I thought, you know what? I will do a combined training. So we did dressage first and then show jumping. And I think the dressage actually really helped calm my nerves because I was like, with dressage, there's only so many things that can go wrong. You know, we can leave the arena, Joey can be, unhappy but you know we're not going to be crashing into a solid fence and I'm not and hopefully I won't be like completely embarrassing myself so there were, I had so many little things in my mind where I was just like there are so many things that can go wrong <laughs> you know um but we went out there Joey smashed his dressage test show jumping he was a little bit green he did feel like a completely different horse and since then we've had a lot of show jumping lessons I've done some more arena cross country with him that he was amazing at and it really felt like you know we we're getting there as a partnership which is incredible that autumn we started having lessons with Trevor Breen and oh my goodness that first two like show jumping lessons. I haven't had too many lessons with him, but the ones that I have had have been incredible. And after every single session, I feel more and more confident. I remember doing a show jumping course with Joey and being like, oh my goodness, this is what it's supposed to feel like. This feels amazing. And it was like, yes, he didn't feel like that gangly youngster anymore. He felt like a powerful horse, but he felt like a powerful horse that I had a partnership with and we were on the same page. And when I asked him to half, half halt, he would, he wouldn't zoom off with me and, it just felt so rewarding and so amazing. And I think one of the reasons why that confidence knock hit me so hard is because I have had a lot of little confidence knocks over the years, but I think because I felt so alone and so in the dark and I had no one to sort of hold my hand, being in lockdown and not being able to have lessons, I felt like I kind of, to do show jumping again, I needed someone to be there to kind of tell me that I was doing all the right things because I was, so worried of maybe teaching Joey the wrong thing or knocking his confidence. Like he was super confident. He was, he was taking me to the fences. It was, it was me that needed to sort myself out, if I'm honest. Um, but we're now in a really, we're now in a really good place. You know, we've been doing lots of dressage competitions, um, and he's been getting pretty much a rosette every time. If I do say so myself. He loves his dressage, he's awesome. So now I just need to get out there and do some show jumping competitions with him that I will do at some stage, but work has been so busy and I've been away traveling over the spring and things like that. But it's something that I really want to do, not because I want to go out there and be the best rider ever, because that's not what my channel is about at all. Hopefully you guys watch my channel and feel a little bit better about yourself. Definitely this video, you'll watch it and be like, oh my goodness, why was Esme scared to go over a cross pole last year? <laughs> you know, hopefully it can make you feel a bit better about yourself. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's not what my channel is about. It's about owning horses and loving horses and riding horses. It's not, you know, I leave the competition to the professionals, you know, the Olympians. They, they if you want to watch how to properly ride, you can watch them. <laughs> but anyway, I've actually had quite a few. I thought I'd talk also a little bit more about my confidence knocks that I've had with Casper and with Mickey and even with my past lone ponies because although I had a really bad confidence knock then, there can just be lots of little things that can slowly add up. So if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that Casper was my second horse. He, well, all the horses I have, I've always owned, I've never sold a horse. I am one of those people, <laughs> I collect them and get way too attached. But anyway, when we were buying Casper, our budget was a lot smaller than all of my friends at Pony Club. And I think I learned from a very young age. I feel like you get to a certain age at Pony Club where, for example, when you're young 
everyone's having fun, it's all great. And then competition and things comes, becomes a little bit more serious and I feel like everyone gets to that stage where they start comparing themselves to others, which you should never do. Do not compare yourself to others. I did this in the past and it made me miserable. If that's, oh, there's this person and they're two years younger than me and they're competing at a higher level or all this kind of stuff. Everyone has their own equestrian journey and everyone goes at different paces. Some people might have easier paths, some people might have more difficult paths, but in, at the end of the day, if you're improving and you're doing better than you were last year, then you're doing the right thing. Or even if you're not, as long as you're having fun, that's all that matters. Now with Casper, don't get me wrong, I love this boy. He, he has my whole heart, but I definitely went through the stage where I always felt like I wasn't good enough. Now, a lot of my friends had really nice horses and not, I'm saying Casper's not a nice horse, but he, our budget was a lot smaller. He was a very young Connemara pony that had not done much in his life. All, a lot of the outings and things that I'd taken to him to, and even like fences and things, it was the first time he'd ever seen all this stuff. A lot of the ponies that my friends had had been there, done that. Maybe their older siblings have passed down. So um, our level was a little bit lower than people in my age group. And I always felt, felt bad about that because I was like, but I should, why am I stuck with the younger ones? You know, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, Casper and I, we have had such an incredible journey and I wouldn't trade it for the world. I look back at <laughs> some of the old footage of us and it honestly makes me laugh. A lot of people labelled Casper as a naughty horse or a bad horse or badly behaved. But if I'm being honest, he was just very nervous and very anxious. And I had to be confident for him. And I think that's the reason why we managed to get through that rough patch where I would end up on the floor quite a lot. <laughs> Everyone goes through that stage where they end up on the floor a lot. If not, you have had some nice horses. <laughs> but no, um, basically, if you've watched my riding story or riding journey, I feel like this is kind of like a recap for you guys. Um, we went through the stage where me and Casper were in a very, very rough patch and my parents were like, look, we're gonna have to like get rid of Casper and have to stop riding him or something because you're gonna end up in the hospital. And it's one of those things where I feel like if I had my own child and they were being bucked off their horse that much, I would say the same thing. So I think one of the things well, one of the reasons why I managed to get through that rough patch with Casper is because I was, I believe, I had this belief and I believed in him and I persevered. And although, yes, I would go into the, those show jumping clinics nervous, I acted confident and that made me confident. And I always think of confidence as a little bit of a trick. If you watch, oh gosh, if you watch some of my old videos, I am pretty much whispering to the camera and obviously now I'm very confident, bubbly and I feel like the real me when I'm talking to the camera and to you guys, but I feel like YouTube has made me confident, but then also there have been times where it has absolutely crushed my confidence. But anyway, I, I'm very good at going off topic and rambling in these videos, so I hope you're enjoying a little bit of a chatty ramble, but anyway. I, I kind of learned then that confidence is a trick. It's not something that everybody's born with. And I was definitely a very shy kid at school or when meeting new people. And I still am, if I'm honest, when meeting new people sometimes, you know, it takes me a little while to get comfortable and things. But um, I found out that confidence is kind of like a trick. You kind of have to fake it till you make it. And that's definitely what I did with Casper. I went out there to those show jumping clinics knowing Yep, I might end up on the ground, but I'm gonna do it in style. I went out there being like, I'm on Casper, nobody else has a Casper, he's my boy, let's go. <laughs> Believing that we could go over those fences gave Casper that confidence, and then he started to really get it, enjoy it, love it, and we really grew as a partnership. And I feel like that was the one thing, knowing that if we didn't change our ways, that I would lose Casper. I think that was the one thing that really drove me to work as hard as I possibly could, to be as confident as I possibly could when riding him. You know, there were still times, for example, one of our first show jumping competitions at Pony Club, he bucked me off twice in the warm up because he was such a little anxious bean. You know, having all the horses zooming around him really made him stressed out. 
and I just went, you know what, Casper, it's okay. Go out of the warm up. We've warmed up. It's all good. Calm them down. I went into that show. I, I could, there are two different things I could have done when I went into that show jumping arena. I could have gone in nervous, anxious, because I'd just fallen off twice in the warm up. Or I did the second thing, which is what I actually did. And I thought, you know what, Casper, I know we can do this. We have jumped so many show jumping fences in our life. Let's go and show everyone what an awesome horse you are. And I went around that course and I rode like my life depended on it. Like my time with Casper depended on it, which it almost did. And we went out there, double clear, second fastest time and we came second. And I wasn't even on the Pony Club show jumping team because they were like, don't really want to put her on the team. So we went there as an individual and you know, I'm not one to boast, but we did do, a, we did better than some of the teammates, you know, and I was, that was honestly one of the proudest moments ever of Casper. He was awesome. And I think just believing in each other, this sounds so cliche and cheesy, but so much of your riding can be down to your mindset and how you're feeling on the day and horses really do pick up on your emotions. So I feel like that was the one thing that I was like, you it sounds really awful. I hate like cheesy quotes and things like this, but you really do have to believe in yourself. So yeah, one of the things that I did learn then is that if you're gonna do something with riding, if that's going over a fence, if you have a doubt in your mind, your horse is gonna pick up on that. So you need to be confident and you just need to go for it and have fun. And that's when Casper and I started doing a lot more competing. I haven't really talked about this much on my channel because it was kind of when I slowly stopped doing competing that I started my channel and my channel really started to take off. Um, but that was when school also got really busy, so I was focusing a lot on my exams and things. But Casper and I had about two years where we were on the Pony Club show jumping team. We went out there and at times we bossed it, at times I got decked. <laughs> but um, I could tell that on the days where maybe I was a little bit more nervous if it was a higher pressure competition and my teammates were relying on me, that was when I didn't ride as well. When I felt confident and I believed in Casper, that's when I did. So I feel like when I go out with Joey, that's the sort of mindset I need to have. Get that good canter, let's go for it. But um, also I thought I'd talk a little bit more about times that I've lost my confidence right at the beginning of my riding journey. Now I feel like because I started riding at a very young age and I'm so lucky to say that I started riding at age five, not many people were privileged to be able to start riding at that age or even to have riding lessons in general if I'm honest. When I first started everything was exciting, everything I felt super confident you know I always wanted to go faster, I always wanted to jump bigger fences but yeah riding school ponies are very different to lone ponies and I definitely had a bit of a confidence knock when I moved to lone ponies because obviously riding school ponies are very well trained especially if they're having complete novices or beginners riding on them and um, everything felt really easy and then when I moved to lone ponies I kind of had this realization that oh wow this isn't as easy as I thought so um my first lone pony was kind of like a share with one of our family friends who kept it here he was really good a lot of the time I just was like on the lead rein and things and then when I kind of got off the lead rein with him I actually had my first fall off Bradley he was an awesome little pony he was a cob I absolutely loved him um but there were times where he could be a little bit quirky and that's when I thought oh wow not everything goes perfect all the time so I had my first fall off him and then also my my other really um, my other pony that I had that was a lone pony called Lola she was very young she was only seven at the time and hadn't really done much um, and I remember falling off at a competition with her and that was like my second fall and that really shook up my confidence for a bit so I was on the lead raid with her for a little while as well and um, she wasn't as good in traffic, so she was a little bit more nervous at times then as well when we went hacking. And that, it didn't, like obviously it didn't hit my confidence badly, but there was just like a little thing in my mind where I was like, okay, this can be, this isn't as easy as normal. Again with Mickey, you know, I felt like, Mickey, don't get me wrong, absolutely awesome pony, love him again, he has my heart. Um, but at Pony Club, there were some flashy, there were some flashy, flashy ponies. <laughs> and I wouldn't trade Mickey for the world. Mickey is worth more than his weight in gold. He is priceless to me, you know. If someone was like, I'm going to offer you the most amount of money in the world for any of my horses, I'd be like, nah, 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 they're mine. <laughs> I could not imagine life without them. That was kind of the stage when I started doing Pony Club and things with Mickey, where I kind of realised, 
oh wow some people have money money <laughs> and um i always i think also coming from like a non-equestrian background when i first started pony club i felt very not unwelcome but not quite well, not quite accepted in different ways so for example you know my parents weren't horsey and you know I can't blame them for that at all they've been so supportive in my equestrian journey and I really cannot thank them enough you know I've been so lucky to just have horses in general and to be able to ride I yeah there were there were so many different things in my equestrian journey where I haven't felt confident in myself as being an equestrian for example not coming from a riding family or for example on YouTube you know I'm not a top level show jumper competing across the world all the time and there was definitely a stage where I felt like I didn't deserve the platform that I had because I was like I'm not the best rider in the world why would people want to watch my videos I don't deserve all of this and I felt a similar thing also when I got Joey especially in lockdown I felt kind of like am I allowed to have a horse this young that I'm training and all that kind of stuff and obviously you know we went through a rough patch, but we're here now and we're both really strong as a combination. As I said before, YouTube has made me such a confident person. You know, if you told 13 year old me that because of YouTube at age 16, I went up on stage in front of 500 people, including Princess Anne, talking about my YouTube channel at the Pony Club conference, I would not have believed her. But also there have been so many other things that I still cannot believe that I've had the courage to do in my life, such as talk to top level Olympic athletes. But also there have been times where YouTube has absolutely shattered my confidence. Now I am such a people pleaser. I love to make people happy. And the thing about my job is I can't make everybody happy. And that's something that I've had to learn to just get on with if I'm honest. Now I understand the equestrian world can also not be <laughs> the happiest rainbows and sunshine place which I tried to make my channel you know I tried to make my channel a really happy lovely place that people can go to and enjoy some horse content especially as new social media platforms and things have come along where people might know your entire story for example the TikTok for you page there are so many riding videos on there that people may be for example on Instagram normally you're following someone for a while you follow their journey if you see one of their bad days you would have seen some of their good days and all that kind of stuff and I feel like one of the things that makes me so disappointed in the equestrian community is if you see a video of someone who's new to riding or learning with riding and you open the comments section and it is absolutely abysmal it is a horrible place and i am honestly ashamed of our community when i see things like that everybody in the equestrian world is always learning nobody knows everything about horses all horses are different and as long as someone is having regular lessons and working on themselves that's all that matters and as long as the horse is happy and not being treated mistreated or anything like that then i feel like people shouldn't comment on other people's riding and you know i'm very lucky that i have lessons at least once a week and i know not everybody can afford that or things like that but i feel like the equestrian world just needs to be more supportive and more kind in so many different ways and Hopefully you guys who watch my videos are the kind ones that support each other because that's really what the equestrian world needs. We need more people getting into riding and not feeling like there are barriers and all that kind of stuff. But that's, that's other videos that I'm making at the moment. But also I know that a lot of you guys maybe have gone through things where other people have not made you feel as confident. For example, I was bullied at school and this honestly surprises some people which makes me laugh so much because they're like oh I thought you'd be you know the popular girl at school. I was the girl who rode horses and had a YouTube channel. I was bullied and I can confirm that but the thing is I was always made fun of doing YouTube and riding horses and I feel like that actually intimidated a lot of the popular girls because I was, conf you know, I enjoyed what I did and I was like, why would you make fun of something that somebody enjoys? That is just sad. What a sad little life, Jane. <laughs> anyway, if you're British, you will get that reference. Or if you don't, you don't. 
Anyway, I, I, I'll add a little sprinkle of references here and there sometimes. I felt like going through school, that gave me quite a thick skin and obviously being on the internet, you're gonna get some dodgy comments here and there. And I've always been so lucky before the incident last summer where Joey and I lost our confidence and I didn't have the best time on social media before that. So many of my friends on YouTube would always ask me like, oh my goodness, how do you get no hate? And I'm like, don't worry, it's there. Just don't speak about it. Cause if you don't speak about it, it doesn't exist don't give them the attention they want. And that's kind of what I did with the bullies at school. I was just like, you can make fun of me for writing if you want, but it's something I enjoy and it makes me happy. So I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna carry on being me, you know? So if you've gone through a stage where people maybe in real life or online have said some pretty nasty things to you, just remember that people throw rocks at things that are shiny, you know? They're not gonna punch down, they're gonna be punching up. And a lot of the time, I understand that people that maybe have said nasty things to me in the past have been going through a really tough time, which, you know, I can't give them an excuse, but a lot of the time they're not happy people and they can probably see that you're happy and want to try and steal that. And I often think of confidence as a flame inside of you and a lot of people will try and put that flame out, but let that flame grow. And there we go. That is, that is enough quotes and cheesiness from me today. I hope you enjoyed my little rant and my little ramble today. I love little chatty videos like this where I talk to you guys because it honestly feels like I'm on FaceTime to a friend or something like that. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever lost your confidence and how you got it back. For me, again, with riding, it was very much do things until they become boring and just do lots of little things where you're slowly pushing out of your comfort zone. You don't have to go, I'm really confident now. I'm gonna go and jump twice the size that I normally do because that's not going to end well. But you just have to do lots and lots of little things to slowly build up that confidence. There are still times where I look back, I'm like, I could have done that a bit better. But at the end of the day, I'm still improving and that's all that matters. But anyway, I, will, I need to stop rambling now. Uh, this video is going to be so long. I'm going to come home. I'm gonna edit it and be like, Esme, why did you talk for so long? Also, if you have been affected by bullying or any sort of online hate or abuse, then I will leave some links in the description below if you need to talk to anyone or need any help. Um, but anyway, I just want to say thank you so much for watching today's video. If you're new or have not done so already, please like and subscribe. It really does help me out. I know you really do appreciate it and I'll see you all next time. Bye.